my brother, are you ready for a call? stop before I was ready. Good morning. Welcome. You know, we're still having Sunday school, and I use that uh, scripture over and over again, Romans 10, 17, if you want to increase your faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So no matter how much we use these scriptures, they're true, and uh, I believe that. If you come to Sunday school, you'll increase your faith. You'll hear the Word of God. Anyone have a birthday or anniversary the past week? I'm looking around. I don't see anybody jumping up. We may have to volunteer someone up here for a birthday. But uh, right now, Sister Brenda. Okay. Let's give Brother Smith a big hand. Amen? I don't think January had very many birthdays and anniversaries, it doesn't look like. But we're getting ready to head into February, and we may have more then. It's good to see each and every one of you here. Glad you're with us today, and we welcome you. And do we have any first-time visitors here with us at Family Worship Center, just with a raised hand? First-time visitors. Hopefully you got a visitor's card and fill it out and give it back to the, one of the ushers. All right, it's good to have you today. Glad you're here. Anyone else? I don't want to miss anybody. All right. Well, it's good to see you here. Come back tonight at 6 o'clock for our regular services. Uh, we'll have in our Wednesday nights, children and youth ministry nights, so come back then at at 6.30, and then we feed the young'uns, and then the uh, Bible study actually is at live at 5, and it's on the live stream at 7. But it's good to have you all here. Let's give the pastor a big hand. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It is good to see you guys. Glad to have each one of you here. Amen. Good to see the hats this morning. I I saw that hat, but uh, we got two of them. I like that. Like mother, like daughter. That's good. That's good. Amen. Uh, Will, it's good to have you. Our first time visitor, Will. Great to have him with us this morning. And Kenny and Dee, not our first time by any, any means, but it's great to have you guys with us today. And uh, Gary, I tell you, Nick and Jennifer are going right to work over there. They're just inviting neighbors and everybody. And I tell you what, that's what it's all about. Amen. Invi- I'm going to preach this sermon sometime this year. Invite somebody to church. That's pretty simple, isn't it? I'm not going to ask how many of you have done it, okay? If we would all do that, i tell you what, the church would grow. And I'm just about to the point where I believe we can start really pushing, inviting people to church and bringing them in. As I believe, Amen. I'm not prophesying, but I believe this corona thing is on its way out to the degree that we can feel safe to come back to church and and I know we're not quite there yet for some and and but we're going to get there and I'm praising God for that amen I uh, heard something this week there was a uh, a young man that came to his dad and he said dad you know I've been thinking he said why don't I won't you let me take the family car and drive it to school every day and then maybe on Saturdays, I could also use the car for a date. He said, well, son, I believe that's something we could think about. A uh, couple of things. If you'll bring your grades up, you're struggling a little bit. And he said, yeah, that's right, Dad. And if you get your hair cut, uh, then we could probably do that. So about a month or two goes by, and he comes back to his dad. He said, Dad, he said, I've got my grades up. He said, I know you have, son. I'm really, really proud of you. 
And he said, but you didn't get your hair cut. He said, well, Dad, I, I want to talk to you about that. I noticed in the Bible that Jesus had long hair. He said, you're right. And he walked everywhere he went. <laughs> Isn't that spiritual? <laughs> Guy told me that joke this week, and I don't think he's listening. I didn't, when he started it, I didn't tell him that joke is about 40 years old. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Now that we got all the important stuff out of the way, we can have church, all right? Amen. It is so good to see you. I'm glad you're here, and God's got something great in store for us today. I believe any time we gather together in His name, He's there in our midst. I believe if we'll praise Him, He dwells in that, and that's what I want to see this morning. I want to go beyond what we can do or feel in the natural. And I want God to come into our midst and do great and mighty things for your life. Amen. Praise God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And, and the prayer request will be on the screen behind me. If you want a list of the prayer requests, we can get them for you. But there's a couple that I want to really, really bring out this morning. I'm not going to read all of them. But uh, continue to remember baby Keegan. He is literally fighting for his life. Has been for over a week now. And uh, there was a little bit of improvement yesterday. So we want to thank God for that. But every day I'm asking you, would you remember this precious little baby in prayer? Also, some of you remember Billy Dennis. Brother Dennis is, uh, used to come to church here. Well, Billy's his son or his younger brother. And Brother Dennis called me last week and said, Billy is in the hospital with COVID. Billy's only in his 40s, you know, so it's a very serious thing. So if you would remember Billy this morning, we would appreciate that also. And here is our last final request, and, and uh, Brother Kenny, I didn't ask you, I, I forgot to ask somebody, would you get ready to pray? Amen, I know you did it last week, but I've just got all the faith in the world. I believe he can pray two weeks in a row. Yes. Amen, how about that? Amen. Let's pray for America. Amen. I'm not throwing in the towel, I'm not giving up, but I believe there are great days ahead for God's people, whether we live in Egypt or whether we live in Israel. Now, some of you understand that. Some of you understand. Whether we live in a land that we don't want to or whether we land where we do want to, God is still in control and still in charge. So let's, let's pray for that. Amen. Brother Kenny. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we especially thank you, Lord, for the privilege to come to your house and for you to give us all your blessings we reserve, Lord. And we know... Lord, we don't deserve any of the blessings for the things that you've went through. But we pray that we can give things back to you, Lord. Lord, we just pray for the sick out here, Lord, and the ailing people. Lord, do you reach your hand down from above? And we're asking for a miracle, Lord, a miracle for this little baby, Lord. Just strengthen them, strengthen the parents, Lord. And if it's thy will, then it's thy will, Lord. We just pray that we'll have the understanding to, and reasons for Lord, we pray for this country. Lord, it's a, such a mess. We just pray that the leaders of the country, Lord, will come to you for supervision and get things back on the right track, Lord. It's all about you. These countries are so messed up, Lord, and this one's right, this one's wrong, but it's all you, Lord. And the sooner we come to this, Lord, the better we'll be. Lord, we just pray that you'll be with each and every one here. Strengthen us, guide us, and direct us. And we ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Don't let your prayer time just be that few short moments or seconds in uh, church. But please, would you pray daily for your people? Because I believe that prayer changes things. I really, really do. So be with us in prayer. we got a very special song. Sister Bishop, would you make your way over here this morning? Amen. I know you all know Sister Bishop in the sanctuary, amen. But there's somebody out there in internet land, she probably didn't realize that she's gonna be singing all over the United States this morning. And so uh, as she makes her way over here, I probably shouldn't do this, but I got to. K and C, she wants me to sing with her, I think. She wouldn't care? No, I better not. Let me, let me get this out of your way, Sister Bishop. You step right on around me here. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the many pearl of gospel music. I told you I quit that. <laughs> I won't even preach when I'm up here right now. I usually do, but I won't. Do what? It's terrible when you're so old you forget the words and need the book, isn't it? Just in case you wondered how old I was. <laughs> I got the words right here, but I sometimes can't even read my own writing. Aren't we glad for the Lord? That's why we're here this morning. I could have stayed in bed where it was warm, wouldn't have had to got out in the midst of the dew and all of that and come to church this morning, but I did it because he's real and I love him. I want him in my life this week. If he tarries and if he doesn't come back this week, I want to be in him, amen? Love him this morning. Very serious words in the, in the lyrics of this song. Among the local taverns, there'll be a slack in business. Cause Jesse's drinking came before the grocery and went. Among the local women, there'll be a slack in cheating. Cause Jesse won't be stepping out again. Well, they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained the soul. head went under cause it's time he went under for the Lord don't that make you happy the scars on Jesse's knuckles were more than just respected the county courthouse records tell all there is to tell the pockets of the gamblers was more than Jesse's money the black eye of the Lord Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained the soul and Satan lost a good right arm. They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under. Cause this time he went under for the Lord. From now on Nancy Taylor can proudly speak to neighbors. And tell them how much Jesse took up with little Jim. Now Jimmy's got a daddy, and Jesse's got a family. And Franklin County's got a lot more men. Well, they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained us all and Satan lost a good right heart. They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under. Cause this time he went under for the Lord. Aren't you glad that God saved sinners? Hallelujah. We've all been there, amen? Only by the grace of God can we come out of the sin mire and come in don't you love him today? Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Well, they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained the soul and Satan lost a good right arm. They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under. Cause this time he went under. Bless you. Praise God. I didn't want her to stop. Amen. Amen. That song takes me back to a time when people used to get into an old-fashioned thing called saved. Do you remember when somebody would get saved and they were just literally the rough guy of the town? Used to hang out at the bars all the time, or used to be a drug addict all the time, basically worthless. And they'd wander across an old church somewhere and they'd kneel at an altar. 
and they'd get saved, they'd baptize. It was news all over the town and all over. Well, friend, we need that again. Amen. We need people to be coming into the church and getting saved so the news can spread out there that uh, God is still doing his work, and he is. He is. We got testimony in this building this morning that could verify that. Thank you, Sister Bishop. Love that song, and you did a great, great job. Amen. Next song the praise team is going to do is one that is absolutely one of the most beautiful songs ever written. Beulah Land.
Amen, amen, amen. Someday, someday we will be there. Walking on streets of gold in glory land. How great a day that will be, huh? How is everybody doing? It's good to see you guys. I'm looking out and I'm seeing some smiling faces. I'm seeing some happy faces. I'm seeing some masked faces. Caden, how you doing, Bob? Told Caden he needed to get him a chief's mask. Right, Caden? No, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. That's weird. How's everybody doing out there on internet land? Good to see you guys tuning in and seeing us. It's good to be back in the house of God. As we spent a couple weeks away in uh, a land to the east in Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> Down on the East Coast, we took Austin and Avalon and Grayson out there, and doggone it, we had to leave them. But we left them physically, but they're still with us. And Austin, Avalon, Grayson, good to see you guys. Or you're seeing me. I'll see you later. Anyway, but it is good to be back. It's good to be back in the house of God. It's good to see you guys and get back things rolling again. And uh, God's got great things in store for you. Did you guys know that? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Come on, give God a, a hand, praise. Come on. There are, there are so many good things, but, but you can't see what's going on out there, what's going on in here, and what I'm dealing with. But God has great things in store for you. Put the stuff aside. Put the, the, the troubles of the world. I was talking to Sunday school a little bit this morning about you can watch the news and, and worry about things. And um, I think Pastor said something about throwing in the, the, the towel or, or waving the white flag. And I mentioned that in Sunday school. We can do all those things and say, ah, it's, I'm just fed up. Or God's people can say, you know what, we can be fed up with the situation, but we can stand up as God's people and say, God, you're in charge. Amen. No matter what is going on out there, you are still in control. Yeah. And I'm going to put my trust, my hope, my faith in you, and we're going to make it through this. It will be okay. Amen. All right? So if, if enough people get that into their, their mindsets, and we talked about mindsets today, and we talked about getting that in there, good golly, what a difference we can make. Right? Amen. So I hope we can get that word out there to, to those out there. You and internet, listen to it. Let it soak in. Tell your, tell your, your friends, your, your workers, or whatever. Get that right mindset that God is in control, and he's got this. All right. We're getting ready to go into worship here in just a second. We've got the offering baskets on the altar. We've got one in the back. You've got uh, a couple different options that you can mail it in or via the Venmo app. And we want to say thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts. This church is uh, flourishing because of your givings and, and your uh, ministry into, in, into this ministry, okay, by doing what God has called you to do. And we appreciate that and thank you for that. So as we get ready to go into worship, and I'm going to say a prayer that God will just have his hand upon our worship. God will have his hand upon the offerings. And God will have his hand upon you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, that we have the abilities, Lord, and the pleasure, Lord, to serve you and to worship you in this great country of ours. God, we lift you up above all things, that no matter what comes in, no matter what goes on, you are in control, and we can trust in you. God, we just ask, Lord, you just have your hand upon this service, Lord. You have your hand upon these offerings and these givings, Lord, that will just go to your need, Lord. We just ask, the Lord, you just touch your people, Lord, that, Lord, we can worship you and we can uh, give you all of our praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand, if you would, and worship together as we sing. <clears throat>
praise God. 10,000 years and we'll praise his name. Amen. Give him a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Brother Fred's coming. You know, the pastor said something to me this morning, and I sung his song a number of years ago with, if y'all remember, the gal in this town that sung this song. You listen to it, his eyes on the spare. <laughs> Just a minute. God's good to us, ain't he? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? For Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He, His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Thank you. His eye is on that sparrow, and I know he watches me, and I know. Watches me. Will I sing? God. Give him a good hand of praise. Amen. Because that is so, so true. 
His eyes on the sparrow, but he watches each and every one of us. Amen. Thank you, praise team and the singers. You guys did an absolutely great job this morning. Give them a good hand. Amen. They did. Amen. I want to give some thanks this morning. I want thanks to all of the people, not just the ones who are up there today, but all of the ones who are running the, the cameras and, and switching back and forth. They're doing a great, great job. We appreciate you and our, our uh, Corlin, who most of the time is operating the words behind us. She does a great job. And for all of you, amen, no matter what you do, we are thankful for you because it would be really difficult to do what we do without your help. Amen. It is so good to see Terry this morning. Amen. He looks like he's feeling a little bit better. Terrible break on his knee there that he's got a long ways to go, but we know God is going to bring him through it. Amen. So, and I looked over and I saw him standing this morning. I don't believe he was standing because his leg was feeling good. I believe he was standing because his heart was feeling good. Amen. And he wanted to give praise to Jesus. Amen. You have your Bible this morning or on the screen behind you. You can turn in your New Living Translation or King James, whichever you'd like. Uh, chapter 6 of the book of Matthew, verse 25. This is a portion of Scripture. when Jesus. This is right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus is laying out all kind of instruction on how to live. I believe if you would live by the Sermon on the Mount, you would make Heaven, hands down. Uh, so much good stuff in there. And Jesus, basically, before verse 25, he's, he's bringing out the idea, don't worry. Put your faith in God. Don't lay up your treasures on earth and depend on that because that could disappear. It could fly away. But when you put your faith in God, you're going to make it. So verse 25, he says, Then... That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. There's the scripture right there this morning. That's the title of this message. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't they far more valuable to him than, are we far more valuable to him than they are? Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? Those of you who are out there worrying this morning, it's, is it going to do any good at all? Absolutely none. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all of his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the flowers, the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Father God, we are so grateful to you this morning, Lord. You are more than wonderful, and we give you praise, and we give you honor. And God, our hearts are hungry this morning for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit for the manifestation of your glory, that you will rain down upon us, God. Touch every person in this building. Remove all doubt. Remove all fear, God. Fill our hearts and our minds uh, full of great gratitude and glory into your holy name. Bless and anoint this message today, Father, that it will accomplish that for which you have it sent. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Title to the sermon this morning is Bird Watchers. Where do you come up with these titles, preacher? I don't know. They just happen. I get a thought in my mind and it becomes a sermon. I can remember as a little boy growing up, I would see uh, on TV or place these bird watchers. They're usually a bunch of goofy looking people <laughs> with weird looking hats walking around in a park somewhere going like this. And so I never really thought too much about wanting to be a bird watcher. But as time goes on, you get a little older, you realize there's such a beautiful thing in God's creation. 
and God's nature. I've heard several people, and Sheila, I don't know if you know it or not, but you had four or five uh, cardinals in your little tree out there. She watches them. I've been told that cardinals are, are predominant this year, uh, coming out much more than what they normally do. I don't know why, but God knows. And birds are absolutely a, a beautiful thing to watch. I, I'll get my birds back when I quit being so lazy that I'll put seed in the bird feeder. It's amazing how when the bird feeder runs dry and there's no more seed, the birds leave. So one of these days, we're going to get that bird feeder filled back up, and the birds will return. And then my wife can sit on the front porch with her binoculars and watch the birds. Somebody said this, song, this sermon is for the birds. I, well, I don't know if it's for the birds or for you, but we're going to get into it. And it's a, it's a different type of sermon. But I, I'm amazed as I thought about this, how that God, when in making of the animal kingdom, did such an absolute tremendous job. And, and I thought many times, if we people can only be like the animals. Somebody say amen or oh me. Wouldn't that be a wonderful, I, I, now you know how I feel about dogs. I'm getting carried away, but that's okay. I got a few minutes. We don't have a dog in our house. I'm not going to go there because I know you do, all right? But I love dogs. I don't want one. Don't get me wrong, I don't want one, but I love them. They are literally one of the most amazing creatures on the face of the earth. God blessed humanity when he made the dogs. That is so loyal and so loving. And they will love you even when it's pretty apparent that you don't love them. And they will come and they'll look up at you with those big sad eyes Wondering if you're going to smack them or pat them on the head. And if you gently reach out and pat that dog on the head, and I don't know the connection between this part of the head and that dog's tail, but I think there's a direct line that runs. Because you touch that dog on the head, that tail just well, all of a sudden just goes crazy. And they'll be there. When you come home, Jeremy has a couple of dogs. Actually more than a couple and they went away, and I went over to do something, and I touched their door to unlock the combination. Do you want me to tell the combination? It's okay. It's okay if I do or okay if I don't. Six nine three seven four two eight eleven twelve thirteen fourteen. Okay. And I touched the first button on that door button, and immediately I could hear the dogs on the other side. When I opened that door, man, they were just so glad to see me. And they're absolutely a wonderful, wonderful animal. And Brenda and I plan on getting one. When we get to heaven, <laughs> we're going to have a house dog. Because dogs in heaven don't stink. They won't jump up on you. They won't lick you. It'll be absolutely wonderful in heaven when we get our first dog. I better stop because I'd have to get into more dog stories and you don't want to hear that. But the animal kingdom has this thing figured out. Animals travel together. There's a togetherness about animals. You look out into the pasture and you'll see the cows many times gathered together, especially if a storm's coming. You look at the sheep and they're gathered together. You look on a High line pole, and you'll see 300 birds together on that high line. And there's something that God has instilled in the lives of birds and animals about being together. So in Matthew 6, Jesus is trying to get his followers to have faith in him as the animals do. To have an understanding that God takes care of of those who trust him. That word trust. Those who put your faith in God. God takes care of that. And he's also trying to get us to become as little children. Because it said in Matthew 18 verse 3. That you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Except you become as a little child. 
I told Brendan the other day, I said, I'll be using you to help me preach one of these days in the near future. When little Owen is big enough to stand on this pulpit with his own strength, and I'm going to have Brendan stand over there and let loose of him, and little Owen is going to just fall forward into his daddy's arms with absolutely no fear. I did that with my grandbabies. He will fall forward into his daddy's arms with absolutely no fear because there is not one ounce of doubt that his daddy would let him fall. Isn't that what God's talking about? When he said, why don't you just trust me? Put your faith in me because I'll not let you fall. Amen. But this morning I want to talk about the birds. In verse 26 there in the King James, it says, Behold the fowl of the air. But in the New Living it says, Look at the birds. Look at those birds, those amazing little creatures. And we can learn a lot of things from the birds. I, I picked this sermon up several years ago when I was reading one of the little daily bread. Had an article in there about the birds. It said, in early winter in Pennsylvania, the Canadian geese gather to make their annual flight to the sunny south. And you've seen them, haven't you? You ever seen that flock of geese in a, in a V formation flying over going, oh, 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 oh. How'd I do? Somebody step outside to see if I called a bunch of men. And then they make their annual flight to the sunny south because God told them, he said, get out of town, boys, it's going to get cold. And they heard him, they heard God, and they went south. It's a long journey for the birds, and not a one of those birds, I think, could make it on their own by, them, by themselves. But as they organize that V formation, one leading and the rest following. That, that point goose, the one out front, he leads, and, and the rest of them just with confidence. They assume that he knows where he's going. With confidence, they just said, if we will only follow him, uh, we can make it. And, and it's not just that, but together their flight range increases 71%. How would you like for your ability to, to follow in life to increase all of a sudden 71%? And where even the young ones and the older ones can, can make the trip and, uh, and they can get there because of the help of the rest of the flock. Are you getting anything out of this? The birds, the point goose, the weak, the feeble gather in the middle or in the back and they go along because there are other stronger ones that, that are paving the way. And together they can do what they never could do by themselves. Could I say that again? I, 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 hope you, I I'm going to the church, folks, okay? I, I'm talking about the church. And together, what glory to God, they can do what they could never do by themselves. Are you getting it? Amen. Those birds can make a journey and make it to the promised land uh, gathered together what they could never do by themselves. Amen. And in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, there's a familiar scripture that tells us when you see the day approaching, when you, and that boy, isn't that the thought on people's minds today? Is the rapture going to take place? How, how soon is the rapture and is the Antichrist on the scene? And, and boy, it's got to be close. Well, Hebrews 10, 25 says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Well, if you think he's about ready to come, friend, I, I believe I'd hang on, hang on to all of Jesus that you possibly, possibly can. Amen. So, in the New International Version, it says this, Stay in fellowship with one another and enjoy the uplifts. The uplifts. The encouragement. I hope that as you gather together with the family of God, I hope that when you come to church and I hope when you hear such beautiful songs like Beulah Land, 
I hope that when you hear these things, it gives you a little bit of an, a strengthening and an increase in your faith and an uplift and makes you just feel like, you know what, I believe. <laughs> Glory to God. I believe that I can make it. Not only can I make it, I'm encouraged about the journey that lies ahead. I, I'm not only encouraged, but I'm getting downright excited, hallelujah, about what God has in store for his people. Hallelujah. Why don't somebody just give him a shout this morning? Amen. Praise God. So it's the, the uplift that, uh, that we experience. And in the birds situation, the V formation of the birds, uh, the flapping of the wings provides an uplift. And that weak bird with a broken wing or an injured wing, that, that young bird that hasn't been able to fly like the others yet, and that elderly bird whose wings don't flap anymore, when he's in the midst of that, there's an uplift that helps him to fly. Anybody ever pull in behind an old 18-wheeler and you feel that draft? Amen. I've never done it before, but the next time I see 15, 18 wheelers going down the road, I'm going to get right in the middle of them, shut my engine off, and just let it go. Woo, glory to God. <laughs> Don't try this at home. All right, okay. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and I thought about that, uh, that the brother birds flapping their wings brings an uplift to the other birds. And then it, I run across this, that if we will flap our wings with our hands lifted high, with our voices rising up to praise the Lord, it will be an uplift to somebody who is down and depressed. Amen. It's about time that in the church we can feel the praise of Almighty God. We can lift him up. Amen. And somebody who may not be there yet can look around and say, you know what? I don't know what they got, but what it is they have, I want. Amen. And that's encouraging to me. A positive person, a positive attitude will increase and strengthen and encourage the whole body of Christ and let us all know that there is hope. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 2, speaking of the body of Christ, says the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. It says that the entirety of the body of Christ is what it takes to make the body function. Now back in the old days when I was a little younger, I would literally do something like what I'm not going to do now. The head would say to the leg, I don't need you. And then I would demonstrate and I'd just fall on the ground. To, il to illustrate my point, Today, if I would do that, I would fall on the ground. I would stay there. You'd call 119. They'd break through the door and they'd carry me out in a, in a, on a, in a one of them little jiggy thing, whatever thing, the, whatever. Gurneys, yes. But we need each other. We need one another. And we're all important. Your position, whatever it may be, we say, I didn't realize I had any position at all. Are you sitting in a green seat this morning? Can I hear an amen? amen. You got a position. You're encouraging. Oh, glory to God. You're encouraging to somebody else because they said, you know what? I'm glad you're sitting there last week. That seat was empty. It's not empty anymore because there's a living, breathing human being sitting in it and has come to the house of God to see what God has to say to them this morning. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Praise God. We're important to each other. And then occasionally one goose will stray off on its own. Amen. Sure glad people don't do that in the church. Or do they? Stray off on its own, but soon it becomes exhausted loses altitude, but hopefully someday will find its way back to the flock where it can regain its strength. We see that from time to time. A goose, Christian. Is that a correct terminology? It'll work. 
will stray off thinking they don't need the church anymore. Stray off thinking, you know what? I don't really need God anymore. And down the road, a period of days, months, or years, they'll realize after Satan has literally drugged them through the mud, and they'll realize, you know what? I do need the body of Christ. I do need the church. And they'll come back, and we'll wrap them in our arms, and we'll put them in the area to where the rest of us can carry them. In the, in the kingdom of God, in the church, we need help. I, I thought about putting a, on the sign out there, help wanted. Is that a good sign? We need all the help we can get in the church, and every church does. We need people capable, able, and willing to fill in certain positions so that nobody is left behind. And sometimes when somebody's do, doing something, they get tired, and we need somebody to fill in for them. We need a pinch hitter. How many of you know what that is? A pinch hitter is a term that's used in baseball. We used to have baseball in America. Anybody remember that? And a pinch hitter is when, when, when one, for whatever reason, they don't want that guy to bat. It's usually the guy sits on the bench that can't throw, can't catch, can't do anything, but boy, can he bat. And when a guy comes up that's pretty good at everything, but not quite as good as this guy, they'll put him in to bat for him. And we need pinch hitters in, in the church. And uh, that's what we have here in the in the bird formation. That lead goose needs help. Are you a lead goose? Anybody out here? Oh, I think many of you are. You might lead a Sunday school class. You might lead a singing part. You might lead a youth department. But you're leading in a certain place. And there's times that you may need help. Well, when the lead goose needs help, you see the head goose is the one that cuts the headwind. It fights off the enemies and makes it a little easier for those around him to, to, to be able to go on. And he, he's the one that keeps everybody in, in, on the right check. And he's the one that meets the changing weather conditions. The one that gets the rain in the face, snow in his eyes, ice on his wings. Pretty soon that lead goose is going along and he's not flapping quite as hard as he used to because, man, he's got ice on his wings. He's tired he's been there and he's done his best but the rest of the goose said you know what he just needs a break one goose would drop out in the middle of the formation he'll fly up there tap him on the shoulder said take a break man go go, go sit in the back there and just ride along for a while he will then take that position and he'll lead in the rain and the snow and the ice will begin to hit him but he's he's young and he's strong and he's fresh and he knew it he's just glory like god he's flapping around he's got and the goose geese Goose geese. Yeah, right. They keep right on going, amen. They keep right on cutting through the wind. They keep right on heading towards their destination because one goose helped another goose. Can I have an amen on that? Somebody said there's young geese and then there's the old goose. And I don't know, never mind. And, and he keeps right on cutting through there. No, no goose could do this by itself. From time to time, we all need help. And every department in the church needs help. Whether it's the little children, whether it's the youth department, whether it's the Sunday school teachers, whether it's the preachers, whether it's the singers, we all need help from time to time. And as we help, and as we step up to relieve and step up to take a different position, there, there's victory coming. Amen. You know, there may be geese that are sitting on the bench just ready saying, hey, coach, put me in. You see, there, a goose can face burnout all by itself. Some of you, this may not mean a thing to you, but a lot of you will understand why there are more than 11 players on a football team. Why do we need more than 11 players on a football team? If you put 12 on the field, you'll get a penalty. Am I right? So we can't put 12 on the field at one time. 
But what about if one gets injured or one gets tired or one gets worried that we're wore out? Some of you may have heard the name Patrick Mahomes. Amen. Here a few weeks ago, he got basically knocked down and out for the count almost. Coach Andy Reid standing on the sideline said, we're through. We, we, we quit. Give the game to them. Our quarterback's gone. We're going to throw in the towel. Now, some of you don't, don't even know what I'm talking about. But some of you have watched football. And some of you watched that game. And there's a guy, whoo, there, there's a guy sitting on the bench. Been sitting there for a long time. Gets to play maybe one or two games a year, a few minutes. That's all he ever gets to play. But he shows up to every practice. He works just as hard as Patrick Mahomes does. He works and he works and he works because someday maybe he's going to get that opportunity to step into the game. And Coach Rand, what is his name? Andy Reid did not throw in the towel. But he, what's his name? The football player, quarterback. Chad, Chad, he points his finger to Chad and says, Chad, get up, man. Get that helmet on. You're going in the game. And he went in and he took over when uh, Patrick couldn't do it anymore. End of story. No, not end of story. Patrick got better. Amen. And next week, there's a game on TV called Supper Bowl. Yeah, I know all about it. And that's where you, after you've come to church next week, woo, glory to God, we're getting spiritual. After you've come to church next week and your, and your recorder has that thing on pause, and you go home and eat supper, then you can watch the Supper Bowl. Amen. And you can eliminate the commercials and the dirty, filthy, no good for nothing halftime show that probably nobody should watch. Did I get my point across? Where am I? I? I've lost my place, Brother Fred. You got the notes there. What should I say next? Amen. But he's sitting on the bench waiting. We need, glory to God, we need people on the bench that are prepared. It's 929. And a Sunday school teacher can't make it. And I say, could you teach that class? Not only could I teach that class, I've been studying for months on the opportunity to teach that class. Amen. Stay in tune. Be instant, in season, out of season. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, New Living Translation. Paul says, under his direction." The whole body is fitted together perfectly. You're not in the wrong spot. You're in the spot that God intends for you to be in. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Amen. I like that. And we need encouragers. We need encouragers. I noticed over the past several months one of you got a little disappointed. One of you, your faith grew a little weak. There's one of you that let your fear rise up and you said, oh, what are we going to do? I would like for those three people to come up here and stand beside me so everybody can know who you are. And the whole church empties out and comes up here. Because sometime during this storm, we've all probably had a little bit of wondering. When maybe your load got a little bit heavier than somebody else's load. The old devil snuck that thought in your mind, oh, what are we going to do next? That's where we got to come to the place where we learn to depend upon God. We need encouragers. In the world of the geese, the aged and the very young and those with infirmities are kept at the rear of the formation. 
the young, the aged, sickly, because they just can't quite cut it like they used to. And they aren't isolated. We're not cutting them out. They're not considered useless, but instead they're insulated. Not isolated, but insulated. Not put aside, but wrapped our arms of love around them. When somebody gets sick and can't do it anymore, we don't cast them out, but we love them. When somebody's young and haven't been able to make it, we love them. Somebody's injured, we love them. They'll get their time. They will get through this, and then they will get back in the saddle, and they will ride again. Amen? They aren't considered useless. When the going gets tough for the leaders, those in the rear start honking as giving encouragement, letting them know that they're behind them and they're not alone. You, you know, if you're that head goose and you're flying along and you're flapping, it's about 2 in the morning, and all the other geese are back there with one eye closed taking a nap. That head goose says, you know what? I, I haven't heard anything about lately. I wonder if I'm the only one still flying. Goose right behind him heard him. He whispers over his shoulder, the old head goose is getting tired. We need, to, we need to show him that we're still here. Glory. One goose says, huh? And the other one says, huh? Before you know it, you got 200 geese going, huh, 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 huh. And you look up in the sky and you can't see them. That's because they're still over Eldon. They'll be here in a couple of minutes. They're, they're honking so loud that everybody can hear them. Friend, I want to tell you from time to time, we need to know that we're standing together and we lift up the praise when somebody gets a little discouraged and a little weak. Amen. That everybody all of a sudden begins to praise and glorify God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. If I was younger, I'd shout this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need encouragers like Barnabas. That's what the word Barnabas needs. He was one that encourages. Amen. We stand behind each other. And we're able to keep on going in this journey of life from salvation point to resurrection point. We need to keep on encouraging one another along the way because one of these days, friend, we're going to make it. But it is nice. It is nice to have somebody pat you on the back, tell you how good you're doing. Amen, even though you're not. Amen. Brent and I are pretty good about that. We go to a restaurant, we find a, a waitress that's not really doing that great a job. You may have had her. I hope you treated her with every ounce of kindness you could. She got my eggs wrong. I ordered over easy and they're hard boiled. Ordered light toast and they're burnt to a crisp. And to you as a good Christian you are, feel it was your undying responsibility to let her know how miserable this meal is. I could have got better food than that at the dog pound. And she said, well, why don't you go to the dog pound then? You, you can do that. Somebody said, we have a right to. I'm paying for that food. We have a right to let them know how rotten their service is. Well, you might have a right to, but it's not right. And Brenda and I will take a waitress that's not doing a real good job, or maybe she's, or she or he is brand new, and we will brag on them. And they'll say, how's the food? And we choke and we say, great. And we'll leave a bigger tip than normal. Because probably the only tip they're going to get all day long because everybody doesn't look at it that way. But I read somewhere in the Bible about being kind to all people, not just to the ones that bless you. Amen. I don't even know where that come from. But it's good food. It's good medicine for you. Amen. 
So we need help in the church. Occasionally one goose will get out of tune and begin to complain loudly and irrationally. Twelve fifteen, and I wished he would shut up because I'm getting hungry. And if she sings one more time that same song she sings forever, I'm getting up and walking out. Don't you agree with me? When you find that person, just begin to praise the Lord. I'm so glad he's preaching past 12. I'm so tired of those preachers that'll cut it off because the dinner bell rings. When the anointing flowing, I pray that he'll preach till one o'clock. Amen. Oh, I love that song. Every time she sings it, she gets better and better and better and better. And the one in front, yeah, glory to God. Preach it, sister. Preach it. Amen. And that one that was grumbling and complaining to shut their mouth. Because they realized they were trying to cause problem and there was nobody wanting to cause the problem with them. So when one goose begins to crumble, the rest of the geese begin to honk even louder and louder and louder. And we need some caregivers. We do in this church. We have caregivers. From time to time, one will get sick or circumstances will cause one goose to fall behind I, this is such a beautiful illustration of how God orchestrated this. When that one goose will get sick, two strong, healthy geese will go back and get beside it and help that goose to land safely on the ground. And they will stay there with that goose, nurturing and doing their best to take care of it till the goose gets better or dies. But they will not Leave that goose alone. My, if people could only be like animals. Amen. First Corinthians one twenty one. No. First Corinthians twelve. There's no one hundred and twenty first chapter of First Corinthians. I proofread my message, but every once in a while I miss something. There it is. So I want you to go home and look this afternoon and look in the 121st chapter of 1 Corinthians. <laughs> it's going to drive you crazy. Chapter 12, verse 26. And whether one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Jesus had this little saying in John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, because you have love one for another. Some singers want to come, musicians. Lost and stray geese are welcome in the formation. Just because a goose comes from another flock, they won't turn him away. It's not an exclusive group of just us group of geese. Any old goose will do. Birds separated from another formation are welcome, listen to this, with full family status. When that goose comes into this new goose formation, this is not what happens. They don't have to meet the goose board. And the questions will come at them. Now, when were you saved and just how were you saved? And how faithful have you been? And do you think you can live up to our standards? Because we're a pretty elite group of geese. Can you think you can do that? The geese don't do that. The geese just separate a little bit and make a spot for that goose to fit right in with another. I've always been this way in pastoring my churches. If a stray goose walks through that door, doesn't matter to me where they come from. Doesn't matter if they were a big member of the last church. It just matters that they want to come in and feel the love and the compassion of God Almighty. And it's our responsibility to let them feel that. That's the way it's been ever since I've been pastor here 
And if you want it to change, you're going to have to get rid of me. So all are welcome. The formation will alter its plans, reschedule its arrival time. You know, if I stop and pick that guy up, I'm probably going to be late for my appointment. I can't help it. He's standing out there in sub-zero weather. And he's got icicles on his ears. And it looks like he's just about to die. I'll miss my appointment if I stop and help that person. Do you get the point? Our job, our responsibility as Christians is to love people of all nature. And Christ, as coming here, had no higher goal than to recruit, to save, and to adopt the stranger into his flock. The night that I got adopted into the family of God, the day before, let me give you a small description of who I was. I was wretched, I was mean, I was unclean, I was undone, I was fit for hell. And the next day I knocked on the door of heaven. And Jesus threw the doors of heaven wide open and welcomed me in as a full-fledged member of the family of Give him a praise, amen. That's the God I know. That's the God I love. He loves you, and you came in that way too. No, I wasn't as bad as you were, Pastor. You may not have been, but you weren't no better roses. You had sin because the Bible says that you did. The attitude of that they're not like us, just it doesn't fit the church of Jesus Christ. One little thing before I let the praise team sing. As we live together in the family of God, I heard this saying a few years ago that that person just rubs me like sandpaper. What happens if you take an ugly piece of wood with lumps all over it and you take a piece of sandpaper to it? You knock off the rough edges and you smooth it up and it looks so much better. That person that rubs you like sandpaper may be very, the very instrument of God that God has sent to you to knock off your rough edges and to smooth you up to where you can look like what God wants you to look like. Amen. Praise God. Church has all kinds of X's in it. And they're all X sinners. Used to be's but they're not anymore. As I preach this little sermon, we can learn a lot from the birds, can't we? As we watch the birds, we watch God's creation of the animals, we can learn a lot about how God wants us to live. God said as He does these things for the birds, doesn't He love you just that much more? Amen. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, if you need the family of God and you need Jesus, friend, Jesus is here for you and we're here for you. If you're at home and you don't know Him, just ask Him to forgive your sins, come into your life. If you're here in the sanctuary this morning and you need God to touch you in any way, shape, or form, if you want to be saved this morning, come you need special prayer this morning, come as the praise team sings. Amen. I sing because I'm happy. Yes. I sing because
Why don't you sing with us? I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches. So one more time, Brother Fred. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. In closing this morning, I just want to encourage everybody in here. There's different needs in all of your lives. And I'm sure the devil every day tries to convince you that the good things are not going to happen. But I want to encourage you that I believe they are. I'm already seeing it. And just begin to believe God for good things to happen in your life and trust him. Amen. Brother Marty, would you stand this morning and dismiss us in prayer? Come back tonight at 6 o'clock.